Okay, first, sorry if there's anyone out there who's been waiting for the second of these vlogs. I have been doing what I said I've been doing, filming and creating content, learning all sorts of new skills, new words, posting, creating content, whatever. But I have not been able to post. Not a technical issue, but I just couldn't. And it wasn't until Sunday morning that I realised why. When I had a notion to do these vlogs, it really was an epiphany for me. I generally thought I'd discovered something that I wanted everyone else to know. And I really wanted to tell you about what I'd discovered and how you might change your life and your health and, and, and even the way you interact with the world around you. I also had great plans that were born out of this revelation. I, I honestly thought that I may have found my life's purpose, discovered what I was put here to do. I kind of thought maybe even I might get some accolades, maybe become a sort of famous health guru from doing it. And this leads me to my second epiphany. It was at exactly this moment, just me and my bike out exploring in the hills in what felt like the first day of a long overdue spring. And my second epiphany was that I was right the first time. But somewhere in between the two, I'd forgotten that the original reason for starting this adventure was for others and their health. And somehow I'd made it about my own personal recognition and success. In focusing in on these things, I'd lost sight of my goal and that's where my wheels had fallen off. I wanted recognition for something I hadn't done yet. I'd forgotten what I'd said I'd do, what this was supposed to be all about, which was telling you what I'd done, what I'd learned, what was my journey, and hopefully help you to start your own. Looking at my videos, they were dull and prescriptive. I was boring myself. Great big lists of medical facts and ought to's, not an inspiring springboard for you to help start your own adventure. But it's okay. I don't mind a wobble at the beginning of these things. It's often a, maybe even a vital step for me. It's, it makes me ask the question, how badly do you want to do these things? Stop, proceed at your own risk and prepare to fail ungraciously. But I do. I really want to carry on and I'm very happy to mess up in front of you all. Okay, so now what? I've told you a bit about my whys, but if we're going to carry on with this, I think you probably want to see what makes me tick. See if we're a match or if I'm going to be someone that's going to annoy you after a week. So here I am, warts and all. I live in London. I love the city and I love the river. I don't know if living in London has made me hard, but it's certainly become a part of who I am. As I've said, I usually forget the important things in life, like this one. You've got to do things for the sake of doing them and not for the results. You can't dictate the results and so they're none of your business. The world is how it is, not how I want it to be. This is what I think acceptance really is. Things will always happen in life. What makes a difference is how I react to what happens. This is all I have control over. I love things with two wheels. I love their simplicity and function. I love their graceful efficiency, the ability to self-power, to empower, but mostly the freedom that they give. Now, economy and waste. I love economy. My kids say I'm mean. I say I'm economical. This shed is 100% recycled. It's made completely out of things I've pulled from skips in the local area. My plan is for the vlog to always be 100% cost neutral. So far, all the equipment, subscriptions, everything else has been funded by things that I've traded or bartered. Basically things that I've sold on eBay. I love eBay. I will fix rather than throw away, buy second hand, swap, always try not to buy new. I will always try to invent, recycle and rethink. Nothing beats something that you've botched together to solve a problem that you've made with your own creativity and your own two hands. I hate the waste of any resources, especially human hours. I think everyone is capable of great things, and if they don't know it, they need to be told it. I was shown by my father that patience, diligent work, and an acceptance of discomfort were required to achieve anything worthwhile. He supported me while I doubted this until I learnt it myself. Now that is what real opportunity is, and it is everyone's birthright. 
I always will overestimate what I can do in a day, but when I look back, I've underestimated what I can achieve in a year. That's why I have to remind myself to keep going, because it's small, consistent acts that get big things done. Something else overrated is willpower. Most decisions are made by the unconscious mind, and willpower is just the wrong tool to change them. Willpower will never triumph over the unconscious mind. Every day I wake up lazy, self-obsessed, procrastinating and telling my story of why I can't. And every morning I have to reboot myself to make myself open and making the day count because every day is the best gift I get every day. And to make the day count is why I'm here. I love my family and I love my friends and everything I do, I do for them. They like this and like me back for it. Win-win. I'm far better off when I get what I need rather than I get what I want. But usually I don't know what I need until I get it. Contentedness is a product of how we live. It's not something that can be generated on its own. And that includes being authentic to whatever emotions are happening at the moment. And that includes sadness, anger and guilt. I think the current obsession with needing to be positive all the time blocks and distracts us from this emotional authenticity. If I'm determined to be right, I'm not usually happy or contented. I will always choose a good worker over a great thinker because patience, work ethic and kindness are a hundred times more useful in getting things done than natural talents, intelligence or a creative mind. At the end of the day, what's important is how you've lived and what you've done, not what you've said you were going to do or thought you were. Now, a little bit of what I know of having been a doctor for 25 years. The body is an amazing creation and deserves awe, reverence and untold wonder. We already have everything we need for health and given the right condition, the body can heal itself in ways that makes our current practice of medicine look amateur. I hate close-minded ignorance, bullies and people who hide the truth or tell you the wrong thing for their own gain. Let me make up my own mind with the best information available. I believe that money should be a reward for good work done. I don't think any good has ever come from people who greedily accumulate wealth for its own sake. I love people who use their wealth and importance to change the world and make it a better place. Planning is much more important than plans, but nothing happens without starting and action. Dreams without a plan and action Stay dreams. I love planning. I find starting really difficult. Shame and resentment are huge wastes of time. Guilt, however, is a good thing to reflect and act on. I love teaching and passing it on. However, we're supposed to be passing the planet on to the next generation and looking after it, and we're not doing a very good job of it. Perfection is pointless. You've got to keep moving and doing in everything. Walk lots, always use the stairs. As I get older, I realise that life isn't short. It's just a series of moments, one after the other. I plan on having as many moments as I possibly can. I love technology when it's progressive and empowering. I hate it when it robs time, creativity and dictates a limited way of thinking. I do love a good old analogue paper and pen though. I was a child of the 70s, grew up in the 80s, became an adult in the 90s. I've seen this mechanical age turn into a technological and information age beyond anything we could have possibly imagined. I've listened to music on tapes, vinyl, CDs, downloads, streaming, and I have loved every single one of them. The more I know, the true extent of how much I don't know is revealed. Soon I'll realise I don't know anything. So don't focus on knowing the answers. Work out what are the right questions to ask. On my own, I'm pointless and powerless. But that's how it's supposed to be.